welcome back to another one of my YouTube videos and I am the Hong Kong Rita. So where am I? I am at college and I am in Loyola Marymount University in California. Exciting! So this will be my main base for the next four years or so except Christmas and summer time when I go back to Hong Kong and this is like my first video here so it's kind of an awkward spot but i will find a very uh, better angle to film at but for now this video that i really need to make right now we're just gonna go for uh right here in this spot and so finally after eons and eons i am back with a book review and today i am going to do the towering sky by Catherine mcgee i've been so excited for this book ever since the last time I read her books basically which was last year when I read the second book in the series The Dazzling Heights and of course even before that with the first book that she wrote which is uh sorry about that The Thousandth Floor and I do have a book review on it so check it out if you would like to and The Dazzling I'm sorry no that's not how you say it. The Towering Sky is the third book and final book in the tower uh, oh no I can't do my terminologies right that's okay the Thousand Floor Trilogy, the third and final book in the Thousand Floor Trilogy. And once again, it has multiple perspectives from Avery Fuller, who is the richest and most perfect girl in the world, but maybe she has a secret down inside. I mean, spoiler alert, um, she's in love with Atlas, basically. Um, it's okay if you, if you don't know who he is, I didn't spoil it for you. All I know, all you know is this is Atlas and that's basically all you need to know. Friends, Lita, Watt, uh, Rylan as well, who got involved with all this mess and she's trying to figure out her life. I mean, everyone in this book is basically trying to figure out their lives. And of course, Calliope, who's a new character introduced in our uh, previous book, which is the second book. And she doesn't play much big of a role in this book actually, but I must say that her story adds on to this and it does, do some minor impacts on certain things in the book. So first of all, we're going to start with a non-spoiler uh, review just a bit. I completely loved it and I think that this book blew away every single particle of my mind to that right now I do have an impulse to quickly head down to Venice Beach because I just feel like I want to go somewhere and do something instead of just holding up in my room. Like I get I have homework to do but it's just a sudden, like it's that sudden impulse that that's also how like the ending kind of affected me. If you read it, then you would get what I mean by how I want to go somewhere, do something would relate to the ending, but more on that later. And most of, a lot of this book with sort of how it's surrounding, it's a lot about lies and cover ups. That's kind of what's going on with the protagonists of our series and everyone has something that they're, they're holding on to some secret that they want to keep from somebody else and they're so afraid from finding but through that they've known how hard it is to kind of keep up that mask that they try to hold up like the more perfect and what do you call that word flawless you try to be the more pressure and the more of the weight that you're feeling on you and that's i that's what i really like about this book i mean i lie all the time I'm not saying that you really should follow my footsteps but i do get where they're coming from that you have that facade and you're always tying tired of putting it up you just want some people to accept who you are really deep down but at the same time you're not sure if other people in society will which brings me to my next point of the power of social media because in the Thousand Floor Trilogy, Catherine did put a lot of emphasis on the technology and no one ever said the technology was necessarily a good thing. Like, okay, this is not really a book review, it's more of a social commentary turning into it, but that's basically kind of what this book is about. And I mean, it does tie in, so please bear with me from here. In this book, you will see how social media kind of just, it's just not even, I don't know, even, like, it, it, okay, we'll start with a personal level. It just complete, it can, one thing can just completely turn a person's opinion upside down and just the agreement or disagreement there's other than the fact that there's social media intervening of so many of these things there's also the miscommunications between one another and it's made like yeah this is probably something my mom would say but in a sense social media or basically different circumstances in your life has blocked out the way of how communication with one another works you would jump to assumptions I don't know this okay this doesn't make any sense I'm talking this on like a one character base level and I can't spoil this right now but I'm trying to figure out my thoughts because it's really messy and I don't like doing outlines when it comes to book reviews yeah as I was saying communication there were so many steps of miscommunications and just everything was just either one step ahead or one step behind and that 
it made such a good story because everything you were confused you yourself as a reader is trying to figure out what is going on while the characters themselves do the exact same and it's just so messy but at the end it played out so well with how the ending turned out to be I must say that I wasn't really in the, like I wasn't so excited and pumped maybe because we're no longer at a cliffhanger which is what the past two books have been we know that it's coming down to resolution and kind of like you know just like the book cover you've got the base of the tower instead of the top of the tower and it it's a good closure to the entire series like it it right now it just feels I feel really heavy because of what the characters have been going through in this book. There's a lot that was going on to them, to their personal lives, and just how it affected them. I felt really bad as well, and I it makes me think about the world I've, I'm have i living in right now, which is what I've been just talking about for the past two minutes or so about social media. So just one last word for the spoiler-free review. This is definitely a book that you should read. It, it gives you such an impact that I'm taking this away feeling so heavy and feeling that I want to go somewhere because I want to clear my head. I want to think truly about, you know, the people in this book and how they're affecting my thinking right now, which is just, that's that's what you kind of want to know. So moving on to the spoiler review. So if you haven't read the book so far, then I'll see you later. Come back anytime you want. Okay, now I can get that off my back. Let's get on to the spoiler stuff. Um, I'm just going to start off with some cons that I keep on thinking throughout the book series. I felt like I mean, a lot of people I know, they don't necessarily like the fact that every character in the book has been paired off with someone. I mean, Avery, we have Atlas, and then Watt, we've got... Who is she again? Lita, and then Rylan has... Co um, Cole? Cod? What? Oh, it's Cord. I'm sorry. Rylan has Cord, and then Calliope has Bryce. In which I get the fact that everything just seems a little bit too perfect. But I think, I think it's like I get how people wouldn't like it. But I mean, I personally am rose romance lover, so I do love it. And I, I'm, I'm personally fine with it. So this is my opinion. Just something I want to address um, before we get into the other things. And I just feel like there were so many paths, different paths that the ending could play out. As in whether Avery was to die or not. Like I was straight on the fact that she died ship. But then later on when we found out that Avery didn't die, it felt like, it also felt like a bit of a mystery because I was wondering why did they never find her body if she jumped off the cliff? Because, I'm not cliff, the tower, sorry. Because I always assumed that she jumped off, but that wasn't the case. Like, I think the opening chapter was a very good suspense. It was definitely a plot twist. I mean, in some sense you could see it coming, in some sense you didn't see it coming, depending on which, which boat you're kind of sailing towards to. And I kind of realized why the ending Watt was not surprised when the Thousand Floor burned up in flames. It's because he knew it all along. Clever. And every character is making their good decision this time. Like, good decisions in life. Like, with Avery, she's she knows that she's been cooped up for so long and she's breaking three i'm sorry my english is so bad today she's breaking free of that barrier that's holding her this whole time which is her parents i think burning the building was such a good thing it's also like a good thing that she was able to withstand all those malicious comments because honestly they are terrible and just to know that there's something that she's going for and just keep going towards that goal to where she wants to be and is to travel the world to be free, which is also why her name's Avery, you know, bird, haha. -ha. I figured that out since book one, but I don't know if you did. Which is also why Atlas is named Atlas, because these two, honestly, these names mean so much, and these two mean so much to each other. And I love the fact that how in the end we have an ending with Alice, and honestly, Atlas and Avery is my ultimate ship. Now, it's not like in real life you would see every single, like, um, adopted brother, uh, adopted sibling go along with like the regular sibling, but it, of course, it doesn't happen too often in real life. But even if it does, I think it it does. I mean, this doesn't only apply for siblings who are not related by blood. I think it also applies to every other person when they fall in love with somebody. Don't criticize them on who they've chosen or who they happen to fall in love with, but instead listen out to them and see what they what they really think, and then let them choose their own decisions. Because I'm sure, of course, in this book, Avery and Atlas has put so much thought into this, but I'm sure you get what I mean. And I love the ending where 
I mean, it co it it coincides with the beginning how Avery Fuller died because that girl is no longer Avery Fuller. She's free. She's someone else. She's someone else where she doesn't need to be a Fuller, and that it's just magnificent. And I'm just happy that Avery and Atlas could reunite. Otherwise, I just want Atlas to go kill himself as well because. I think that was that was like the better option just to make this a grand tragedy. But I get the feeling that by the end of the book it was turning sort of more of a happy ending, so I do get it and I would just yeah. I I was I knew I was listening to the wrong music and I couldn't listen to sad music anymore. <laughs> Moving on, we've got Lita and she to everyone in this book has grown so much. Lita, she herself has made so many decisions of she like I think the time where she when when she started listening to I don't know who it was but when she started confronting oh uh, yeah it was Rylan I think when she started confronting the fact that she might have or might not have actually killed somebody then she knew the right thing to do was to basically call on herself and I think her realizing that it's okay to make mistakes as long as you live up to it is is what was the best for her and by the end of it that the fact that Avery gave her a second chance to live like and just seeing her recovery because she is having a lot of mental issues was it was it was a good feeling. Lita is letting down her mask as well being more of who she wants to be and that and she knows that it's okay to let go sometimes and you don't have to put on that mask all the time which is basically what every character is doing and will as well as get more of on that later. And directly going related to Lita is definitely Watt. Now Watt has made such a big decision by the end of the book because he has given up Nadia his super quantum computer. I think it was it was really at the point where he was choosing going to which college where he really realized the problem was himself that the fact that he installed an AI in his brain has it, it became a barrier, which is what social media and technology is. It became a barrier between human communication, which is why he failed the first time that um, he went to the MIT um, interview, college interview. And it's, it's, AI is just something, uh, I would like to say that human emotion is something so irreplaceable because it's something that technology cannot replace. And I'm not going to speak further on how technology is affecting our lives. I'm sure you've heard of this enough, but you get what I mean with Nadia and her being the one to actually kill Marielle, manipulating all the scenes together. And just, it's, yes, technology can save so much of your time, but in the end, it if there's something that even technology and AIs cannot do, it's human emotion. And I myself am so emotional right now because of this book and I, I don't even know what I'm thinking anymore. I'm just out of my mind. I didn't really exactly completely follow Calliope's story because, I mean, I was really just in for the Avery and Atlas boat, but I did, of course, learn about every character story and I really liked... Calliope's story in this time. She wasn't that vicious character as we knew her in the previous book. Actually, I mean, even in a previous book, we knew that Calliope has a secret side of her and that it's much more fragile than you think it is. And Calliope is the one who's holding the biggest facade of it all because she's a con artist with her mom. And the moment that everything starts to break down, it's not only with Calliope. Every character, when they're reaching that point where they're being broken down into pieces by other people, it's when they realize that it's fine to let it go and there are there's someone there's always going to be someone who's waiting for you to be there with you and with Calliope she has Bry so I'm very happy for her that it's okay to let go and she knows what she wants all this time like the times that she's been escaping um I mean what do you call that leaving her house secretly she knows what, he, what she wants and I think breaking apart from her mother that moment I got really mentally emotional because she finally could stay like she could be who she wants to be the one that she's been desiring for so long throughout the time that we've been reading from Calliope's perspective and I mean it's also nice when you also see Calliope talking this the sign up but by the way um when Calliope realizes that Avery isn't as perfect as you always think she is and that's with everyone they're not as perfect as you think it is and everyone is flawed and it's the best thing about it is you learn from it and 
in the end, what you really need to do is be yourself. And among all of this, we have Ryland, who is completely different because she is not exactly putting up a face. She's just facing decisions on what she wants to do, in which she already she already realized a lot of it in um, book two of what she really wants to be and who she wants to be. But the main problem with Ryland in this book is that she really needs to find out where her heart goes and basically her doubt in people because she's been alone and taking care of her sister all the time, which is what Cord addressed in the book as well. And Rylan's perspective, I wouldn't say I hate it. I did love the fact that she is finding her own way, having her development. But my favorite part about Rylan's story is when she talked about story and when she started writing that screen read of her own. Now, I don't remember that paragraph, but for those who read it, I think you know what I mean about how Catherine and Rylan try to develop... Ah, deliver what a story actually is like yeah it's more dramatic than a regular reality is like our reality but at the same time it draws a contrast between their reality and our reality and it just i i don't even you get it don't you and it's just i mean j jumping back to avery's because i want to talk about storyline now i think it's so in the end it's just so saddening to see how society is played out in a thousand floor about gossip social media as well and the fact that avery herself was genetically made like how perfect her parents want to be and like just that reputation that her parents wanted to uphold and all of that like that's all they really cared in the end they didn't really care about avery and atlas happiness it was just all about making themselves look the best and i thought that it was it made a good plot and it was really saddening and yeah. I mean, I'm honestly wordless for this book. It's wordless for this book. I mean, in the end, what I'm most glad about is that everyone is breaking free of what has been preventing them from being themselves and doing what they really want to do and following their hearts. And seeing that breakthrough in this final book, it's it's such a heavy closure that I I'm I'm speechless, honestly. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me today in my book talk, and I hope to see you all in the next video that I do. Thank you, and bye, and please just deal with this college room.